Hi everyone, it's Shannon. I had the best trip to the thrift store this time around and found one of my most favorite things ever. And we'll get to that in just a little bit, but up first is this pink lantern. It was only $2. These are so, so popular right now but they are more popular in the more of the rattan color or black color. So that's what we're gonna do to it. It needed a little bit of work, so I got out my hot glue gun and fixed this little piece with the glue and my electrical tape and decided to paint mine black. So this black um, electrical tape will blend in perfectly. You won't see it in the end. I ended up taking this down into my workshop. I'm using my paint tent. I love this. This is perfect for indoors and outdoors. If you're gonna use it indoors, just make sure you pop open a window and a door to ventilate. And then I gave this a few coats of this matte black spray paint. It's a Rust-Oleum brand. And it also will hold up to the outdoors. Now, whenever you're working with things like this, where there's a lot of nooks and crannies and crevices, um, I actually did a coat with it right side up and after it dried completely, I came back in and flipped it upside down because then it will reveal all kinds of more spots that are going to need more paint. So the second coat, I really took my time, made sure I got anything that I missed the first time around. And here's the before and after side by side. You can see it now it looks brand new. I also came across these bamboo coasters for only $1. The front side kind of had this emblem burned down into them, so I decided to flip them over to the back side and give them a completely different purpose. So the very first thing I did was just lay them all out, flip them upside down, and painted them with two coats of white chalk paint. So now that I have all of them painted and they're all completely dry, I still had the little tray that they sat into and I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do with this. So if you guys have ideas for me, leave those down in the comments below. I'd hate to just throw this part out. So we're gonna work with these coasters and actually add some vinyl decals onto the front. I wanted this to say home. So I used a Oracle matte black vinyl and just printed out the letters H, M, and E. And we're gonna use something a little bit different for the O instead of just using vinyl. I had some of this greenery from Walmart, I believe it's from, and just made an O out of that and hot glued it right onto the coaster. Now I wanna add these coasters onto a piece of wood to create a wood sign. So I have a one by eight here that I am cutting down to 18 inches long. Now that I look back, I wish I would have made it at least 20 inches long, if not 22 inches long. And you'll see why here in just a little bit. But once I cut it down to 18 inches long, I took some 80 grit sandpaper and sanded out all of the imperfections and splinters out of my pine. So here's why I kind of wish I would have made mine a little bit longer. I wanted to add a border around the wood so it would have a wood tone in the middle and then a white border around the outside. So I'm just using some masking tape here and some brown acrylic paint to give me that wood stained look in the middle. But once I laid out my tiles, I realized that I wanted them spaced apart a little bit more. So I ended up making my 
uh, brown and wood tone frame a little bit larger. And so I just reapplied the tape and repainted the brown and then added some more painter's tape to frame it out with the white chalk paint. So this is definitely a much more simple and easy way to get that framed wood sign look instead of actually using wood to frame out your piece of base wood. So if you have any type of scrap wood laying around or even a Dollar Tree sign, you can do this technique. Just create whatever color you want in the middle and then use a different color as your frame. And then all I needed to do was to hot glue my coasters right onto the front. You can see here, this is why I wish I would have made my sign just a little bit longer so I could have spaced out my tiles a little bit more. But honestly, I think it's just a personal preference and it still looked really, really cute in the end. I'm kind of drawn to anything that is wood at the thrift store because I feel like there's always an option to update it and recreate it. So I found this wood vase, it was only $2 and I didn't necessarily like the finish or the look. You can see on the bottom here, it was actually probably handmade and originally $20 when it was created, but I found it for only $2. I actually had my husband help me with this. He has a much stronger grip and was able to cut this vase in half for me. And he's using a multi-tool. I would kind of recommend maybe a table saw or something that's a little bit more sturdy, but he was able to get this to work in a pinch for me. And it does take a little bit of time, so just be very, very careful and go really slowly if you find a piece like this and you wanna hack it in half. And you can see that the wood actually was not as thick as it looks. It has kind of a uh, channel in the inside. And I was able to get these two pieces out of one. And I took the sander to it. It had some glue. So you could see that these pieces were actually glued together. So I took my 80 grit sandpaper and sanded it all down smooth. So the high gloss kind of look was definitely not my style. So I took my white chalk paint to it and gave them two coats on each one and created two separate plant holders out of one vase. And here's the side-by-side -side before and after. Not a bad update for only $2.
Now this was literally my most favorite find at the thrift store ever. It was reclaimed pieces of wood for only 50 cents each. These must have come from an old porch or something. You just cannot replicate this finish without having your wood sit outside for a considerably long amount of time. So I found some corbels, I found some finials, and even these wood squares. We're gonna make several different projects out of these and I'm so excited for you to see them. So I did have to do a little bit of work on these pieces before I could actually create with them. I took some 80 grit sandpaper and hand sanded everything down, mainly because I wanted to make sure I got off any kind of splinters or uh, pieces that were kind of hanging off of them. They also had a quite a bit of grime and buildup on them. So I just kind of took care of that. I didn't want to sand them too much though. I didn't want to get rid of that beautiful weathered wood finish. And they also, some of the finials had some old screws in them. I needed to remove those. And I also just wanted to make sure everything was safe and um, usable for the projects I was gonna be working on them with. So I did actually take some clear matte spray paint and sprayed them all and sealed them all really well. And it looks like it they're darker in the photo because the spray paint is wet, but they did dry um, kind of more in their natural color. It's just kind of the spray paint that makes them look darker. So up first, we're going to make sort of a pedestal type tray. And I have this one by 12 piece of scrap in my pile. It's probably a little bit less than square. Of course, you can make yours whatever size, use whatever kind of scrap wood you have. I did take my orbital sander and 80 grit sandpaper to it to smooth it all out. So we're gonna be using those finials for the feet of this tray. And I wanted sort of a two-toned look since it's hard to replicate that faux wood finish. I decided to create a faux finish with the top of the tray in kind of that two-toned look. So what we're doing here is adding a coat of gray chalk paint in the color Elephant by Waverly. You can find this at Walmart. And I just made sure to coat the top bottom and all of the sides of this one by 12. Once that was dry, I came in with my white chalk paint and did a couple coats lightly, brushing back and forth evenly, but also making sure to leave some of that gray paint underneath showing through. That's gonna give us a nice faux wood finish that will pair nicely with our actually real weathered wood feet. Now to add our bottom pieces in the feet, the finials, I'm adding some wood glue to the bottom of each foot, flipping it over and adding one and a half inch brad nails into the top that will go through and secure those feet to the bottom. I love this brad nailer. I actually keep it in my craft room. It comes in super duper handy for crafting even. It's battery powered so you don't need a air compressor and I'll make sure to link the one I use down in the description box below. So here I have my lantern sitting on top. I love how it looks pretty next to my new home sign with my uh, coasters, but you can also use it as sort of a centerpiece on a coffee table and put a candle on it, photos on it, plants on it. You could even put it in a kitchen and put dishes on top of it. So very versatile piece. I was so excited to find these weathered finials. We're also going to use those corbels, or I guess they're not really corbels yet unless you create them to be, but they're pretty decorative corner pieces. And this is a 
faux antique window that I created using Dollar Tree barbecue skewers last year. I'll make sure to link that up in the iCards and below down in the description box if you want to see how to recreate and make your own. I actually wasn't using this anymore. It was kind of just set aside in my storage and I wanted to give it a new life. So I just removed all of those barbecue skewers. I just used a uh, hot glue to keep them in place so it was easy to pry them all apart away from the frame and I also had to scrape some of that glue off to give me a nice finished edge that we needed for our uh, weathered wood pieces to sit on. So now the edges needed some touch up paint to cover up what I had scraped away. So again, it's the same weathered technique where I added gray paint on first and then used white chalk paint over the top. Then to add my pretty decorative pieces, I used a combination of wood glue, which is going to hold it more long-term and permanently, and also some hot glue. So that would kind of keep it in place quickly until that wood glue would set up and dry completely. I love being able to repurpose things I find and also things that I already have to create something completely new and different. I love the way this looks on my shiplap. I paired it with my handmade magnolia wreath and I have a video on that. I'll make sure to link that down below too. Such a pretty update. And now what in the world could we possibly make with these wooden pieces? Well, I was excited for the challenge and decided I was going to create a clip sign holder. And this is a binder clip from Hobby Lobby. It came in a set of two and I had one left over. I also had this dowel rod that was the perfect size to fit into that hole on our wood base piece. And I'm using my miter shears to cut it down. So I'll link these down in the description box below too. Another staple in my craft supplies. Now I did want to try my very very best to try and get that same look even though I knew it was kind of impossible I was going to do my best to make this match that wood base piece so first this dowel rod got a coat of gray chalk paint then I added some brown thinking that would kind of bring in some of the brown tones of the wood and it just made it super dark and I didn't like that so I decided to lighten it up with some white chalk paint and that made it way too light. So you can see it's not easy to mimic this uh, weathered wood look, but I decided one last try, I was going to keep it all wet, come in with my gray chalk paint one more time, kind of smear it all together. And lo and behold, I got something close enough anyway. And once that was dry, I took my wood glue and inserted that dowel rod right into the center of that wood piece. And now it's time to add the binder clip to the top of the dowel rod. I just used some hot glue for this that sets up super quick and holds it on perfectly. And then I hit Pinterest to find a beautiful free printable, which I found at repurpose and upcycle of this pretty botanical print that just finished off this look and made it look amazing. I'll make sure to link that down in the description box below. So make sure to go check out that blog if you're interested in that. Also check the description box below for the videos that I mentioned throughout this tutorial, along with products I use to create with. And also if you haven't yet, please subscribe and hang around as I bring you all kinds of new DIYs, tutorials, and inspiration like this every single week. Also hit that thumbs up button. And I want to thank you all so, so much for joining me today. I will see you in the next one. Bye everyone.